Hey, what's up all my kaijus out there? This is Nick, the Famicom Raider. And today we're back with some more Lost Classics. We're moving on now to Super Nintendo. We saw some great games in the last for the NES and for the uh, Atari 2600. Uh, NES titles range from fan-made games to games that were never released, prototype games that they are bringing to life. All for great prices. Check out the site, guys. It's all linked in the description below. All right. So we're gonna have, there's gonna be a three part for the SNES. I'm gonna do one part per page because these are a lot of games and we do uh, scan some of the videos too. Alright, first game, a cell grid. A seal grid? I guess, I guess that's what it's, it's called. This is, looks like a, a cool looking mech game, like a tunnel, tunnel shooter. You got modified weapons. Alright, let's read your spell. You've never played a game quite like Excel Bird, or Grid. You play as one of three different uh, robots racing through a 3D tunnel, either attacking or defending yourself from other attackers. Each robot has a variety of attacks and power-ups, can be found throughout the stages. Each robot can also be customized with different weapons. Well, that seems pretty legit. Now you're going to notice something that the NES prices we're around 30 to 35 bucks and so of course Super Nintendo price is going to be around 50 bucks. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about paying 50 bucks for a repro or uh, a prototype game that they're bringing out. To me a prototype game is worth whatever price is on it because it's something you would never have been able to play without this. I mean probably could play it on emulators but if you want the physical copy these all come with boxes and menus. So just think about that. Alkaist. Now this is the. This looks like a adventure game with RPG elements in it. The graphics look pretty decent here. Let's see. Okay, this is developed by HAL and published by Square, so this is actually a good game. Alkaist is an overhead action RPG which never saw the light of day outside Japan. So this is another. Uh, game that was produced in Japan for the Super Famicom and never came out. I'm going to be looking for this on Super Famicom because I have to have that. But I might pick up this too just to have the English version of it. I, I, I recommend repros of regular games if they never came out in your country or if they weren't in your own language because you get to play it in your language you can understand. So it's not really taking away from the original. It's actually it's the original just you know so you'll be able to enjoy it. I think all games should be enjoyed by everybody. Let's see, I'm trying to get to uh, there's a lot of story here. Okay, here's the actual uh, walking around part. That looks pretty cool. You get the the mountains and the sky in the distance and the valley below. And these guys are coming to fuck with him, so he's like fuck you. He just lost his sword. <laughs> what now? Cheetah came to help him. Let's get, let's get some fight. Where's some fight? You're on one platform and you can jump down to a, a lower platform. That is neat. So there is like height and stuff in this game. And you can see below you the ground over here in these cracks. That's cool. It reminds me a lot like Toe Jam and Earl. That, that type of like leveling. Alright. Then we got Bahamut Lagoon. Now we all know this game. I'm pretty sure you guys have all seen it on the uh, Super Famicom. It's a strategy based style RPG, plays similar to other Squaresoft uh, strategy RPGs. Although it was advertised as coming to North America, Bahamama Lagoon unfortunately never made it and only saw a release in Japan. So this is another that was only localized in Japan and was advertised to come to the US but just never made it. 96, 
I think that's because uh, the next game coming out was what? N64. So they stopped doing uh, Super Nintendo and started working on 64 stuff at that time. Awesome. So now you can actually play this game. Um, it was a Japanese game, but it's been translated in English. That's cool. Then we got Bastard God of Destruction. Now this is based on an RPG. And it looks just like a fighting game. Manga series. God's Instruction is a 3D one on one fighting game for Super Nintendo. Let's check out a little snippet here of the fight. Wow, that is trippy. That is trippy. Like when they move, the background moves too. It reminds me like Dragon Ball Z for the, uh, the Super NES. So you can move forward and backwards, like like this, and side to side, forward, backwards, up, down. Wow, that's cool. So it's like it's a full 3D plane. You got 2D sprites moving in a full 3D plane. That is awesome. That is worth checking out, guys. Definitely. Bastard, God of Destruction. All right, next game we got we got Burning Heroes. Who made this? Enix. This is an Enix game. It's another RPG. That looks decent enough. It's known as uh, in Japan as Nek Neketsu Tiriku Burn Heroes. Similar to uh, Live or Live, the game starting the, giving the player a choice of multiple characters at the beginning of the game, with each character uniting through the course of the game. Having never seen the light of day outside of Japan, this is another Japanese one. That's pretty neat. Clock Tower. This looks like a pretty scary game. I, I'm guessing this is a Famicom that never came out. You're a girl, and you're stuck in this like building. Okay, so this is the prequel to Clock Tower on PlayStation. Uh, the game was never released outside Japan. It has a haunting atmosphere, challenging puzzles, and puzzles and multiple endings. I'm definitely looking for this on Famicom here in Super Famicom. I gotta find it here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably get this from this website, so the English translation, but I have to have the Super Famicom version. Crystal Beans from Dungeon Explorer. Wow. It's in the title. See, that's the overworld. That looks like a, a dungeon crawler game with little slimes in it. Uh, we'll skip the video because we can only tell it looks kind of cutesy. So, what is this game about? Alright, this is a PC Engine Turbo Graphics game. Various classes in the game even offer cooperative multiplayer in an RPG, which was unheard of at the time. That, that sounds cool. You can have like two people in the RPG together, separate controllers. So you can be like buddy and buddy together. That's cool. That is cool. The game was uh, heavily modified and ported to the Super Famicom as Crystal Beans from, Dun from Dungeon Explorer. So it originally was uh, Dungeon Explorer and then they changed it to Crystal Beans from Dungeon Explorer for the S Super Famicom version. But it, it came out on the PC Engine. Crystal Beans has been fully translated into English and available to play on your Super Nintendo. That's cool. So, a Turbo Graphics game ported to the SNES. That's neat. Dark Half. Well, we got like Dracula there. Eerie Black Hole. Okay, I like this kind of like fighting games like this. RP. I like. I like this kind of RPGs like this, where it cuts away the fighting scene from everything else. Pretty cool. This was a. Uh, Late release on the Super Famicom, uh, awesome RPG by Enix that didn't receive an English translation until 2015. Let's see, there is a little video here, we might check out just like a snippet. I just want to see if it's like really, really cool or what. Let's see, these are opening scenes, let's get to the, some meat, nice candle.
really mighty my face. So it looks just like a dungeon crawler. See some black hole. So that looks kind of cool. Then we got Dragon's Quest 1 and 2. I love this game. Dragon's Quest games are awesome. It just sucks that Japan had all the Dragon's Quest and we didn't get it because these slams are so cute. Okay. So what, uh, these were, uh, okay. So the long running Dragon Quest series started on the Famicom with Dragon's Quest 1 followed by Dragon's Quest 2. With the Super Nintendo came around, Enix decided to remake both 1 and 2 and put them on a single cartridge. New graphics and vastly improved sound meets the same classic story and gameplay from the originals. So if you never played Dragon Quest 1 or 2 because they were only released on the Famicom, this is your way to play it. It's been retranslated into English, so it's basically the original Dragon Quest 1 and 2 Redux. Awesome, very worth checking that out. That's two games and one right there. Dragon's Quest V. So, Dragon's Quest series has always been more and more popular in its home country of Japan than in North America. Of course, because they only released in Japan on a lot of these. While North American fans got to experience Dragon's War Dragon Warrior. 1 through 4 on the NES, Dragon's Quest 5 and 6 on the Super Famicom unfortunately weren't released here. Dragon's Quest 5 is a highly regarded entry in the series and only can be enjoyed in English through this. So this is a translation of Dragon's Quest 5. Uh, I think they also have Dragon's Quest 6 on here too. Alright, Famicom Detective Club Part 2. Now this looks like a detective game, this is pretty cool. Fans of text adventures game. Fans of text fans of text adventure games should check out the Famicom Detective Club series. Originally released in Japan with Famicom and later ported to the Super Famicom. Part 1 and 2 were never released outside of Japan. Here we have a fully translated port of 2 for the Super Nintendo. Really cool guys, if you're into text adventure games. That's a really good one. Alright. Final Fantasy V. Has to be one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. And here it is. And here it is in all of its glory. The game has been ported many times, but the Super Famicom version is still the version to get. The game has been fully translated into English and can be played on NTSC, SNES, and compatible systems like Retron 5. Awesome. If you want to play uh, Final Fantasy V and have it in your collection in the English translation, here you go, guys. Fire Emblem. Not that many Fire Emblems came to the States, so it's cool that they're going to bring it here. Now we can have the whole Fire Emblem story. This is the fourth entry into the popular Fire Emblem series and the second to appear on the Super Famicom. Please note that the intro and title screen has not been translated through the rest of the game in English. So the intro and the title screen are still going to be in Japanese, but the rest of the game will be in English like that. So if you guys want to play Fire Emblem, General of the Holy War, now you can. And the same with the Mystery of I think this is another translation. These games look cool though. I love this style of game. So let's see, starting on Famicom, Super Camo, GameCube, before getting a GameCube entry which was released in the English speaking audience. Mystery of the Fire Emblem is the first entry in the Super Famicom. So here we go, this is a fan translation. This is another Fire Emblem, and then Front Mission. So this is an English translation of the award-winning RPG game, Front Mission. So in America, we never got Front Mission 1, 2, we had to wait until the third iteration of Front Mission. But now you get to play Front Mission 1. 
50 bucks. So there you go guys, there are a lot of Super NES titles here. Some really good ones that I'm looking at, it's going to be Clock Tower, uh, Crystal Beans Dungeon Explorer, uh, Bahama Mutt Lagoon, Bastard, Final Fantasy V, probably the Dragon's Quest uh, 1 and 2, that's what I'm really looking at, and Front Mission. So this has been the first page guys under the Super Nintendo tab on Lost Classics. You can get all these games for around 50 bucks each. They all come with boxes, manuals, and most of these games, this is the only way you'll be able to play them. And if you want to play them in English, this is another way. Now you can, of course, get the emulator. I'm pretty sure there's a ROM out there for all these games. But if you want to hold it in your hand, and feel the goodness, and have the rare title that was never released sitting on your shelf, and when people come by to look at your collection, they're like, what's that? Oh. Hey, this is that bastard game that was never released. Yeah. That shit feels so good. It feels so good. Anyways, my kaijus, thank you for watching. Check out the next video as we get into page two of the Super NES lineup at Lost Classics. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.